Dave Walker, your Connect Guru here with a quick tip for those of you who use Adobe Connect events. You may remember that when you're setting up your event, you can include speaker information and a speaker image. But what if you have more than one speaker? How do you include information about the other speakers? That's what I want to show you today. Here's an event called Unchained, the power of mobile computing. As you can see, we've included the information about one of our speakers. But we need to add two more. Of course, there's no place in the Edit Information page to do that. Let's take a look at the event landing page. Here we can see where the speaker info is displayed. In order to add other speakers, we're going to have to modify this page. Back on the event information page, we can see that we're using the demo template for this event. Let's go to the event templates link at the top of the page. We'll click Edit Template to get to the template editing interface. This shows the shared default template in edit mode. But we don't want to edit this template, so let's click on Shared Templates in the left column. Since we know that we're currently using the demo template for our event, that's a good place to start for designing our custom template. Let's roll the mouse over that template so we can see the buttons to the right, and then let's click on the Create a Copy button. In the Copy Template dialog box, we'll create our copy into our Private Templates folder, otherwise known as My Templates. And we'll name it Unchained, The Power of Mobile Computing, April 2013. This template is specific to this event. We might be able to reuse it later if we have another event with the same speakers, but otherwise it's a one-time use template. Anyway, let's click Copy to finish creating our new private template. Presumably, Connect has brought us to our new template for editing, but I like to make sure I'm on the right template, so I always click the My Templates link under the Event Templates and click the Edit Template button for the correct template. Now we'll add our speakers. First of all, the speaker box should be the speakers box with an S because we now have more than one speaker. So I'll double click on the title and change the text to speakers. We can leave the current speaker information just like it is. That way we only have to add two more speakers and not all three. Notice that below the current speaker information, there's a bar that says end of columns. The speaker information is set up in two columns, the speaker image on the left and the name and other info on the right. If you remember when we previewed the page, the text of the speaker overview extended quite a ways below the speaker image. So we can't just add a second image below the current image or it won't line up vertically with the new text. Is that confusing? Here, let me show you. I'll add an image component to the left side of the speaker area. Double click to open the edit component dialog. Click in the center of the window to choose my image and click OK. Then I'll add the speaker overview text for the second speaker to the right side. Double click, paste in the overview text and click OK. Now I'll need to activate the template so the changes take effect. Then I'll have to go back to the Edit Information page to change the template. And of course, save my changes. Now let's go back to the landing page preview and see what it looks like. See how the second image doesn't line up with the overview text for the second speaker? Also, the second overview has a white background and the font size and color are wrong and the image size doesn't quite match up. Let's go back to the template and fix all of these issues. If I double click on the first image, I'll see that the width is set to 100 pixels. Let's set the second speaker image to the same width. I'll double click, go to the advanced tab and set the width to 100. Next, I'll check the settings for the first overview text box. I'll right click and click edit. Here, I'll jot down the font color, font family and font size. Now, I'll edit the second overview text. Right click and edit. I've determined that the background color is EA, EA, EA. The font color was 696969 and the font family was Helvetica and the font size was 11. I'll click OK and that text looks pretty good. 
but we still need to make it line up vertically with the image. So what we need to do is actually start a new set of columns below the current set. In the CQ5 Sidekick, I'll select the Columns category and drag a new two-column section below the one that's currently there. Now I'll drag my components from the first speaker section into the one I just added. First the image, and then the text. Did you notice that in the first set of columns, the columns are not of equal width? But the columns in the second set are. Let's change that. For the second set of columns, I'll click the Edit button and change Column Layout to 2 Columns, 40%, 60%, and click OK. Now the column width for the second set of columns matches that of the first set of columns. That's starting to look pretty good. Let's activate the template and look at the preview page again. It looks pretty good, except that I'm just noticing that I need to add a name for the second speaker with larger, bolder text. Let's go back to the template. I'll add a text component above the second overview text. Then I'll check the settings for the name text on the first speaker to make sure I match them. I'll jot down my font information and use it to set my new text component. Note that I have to set the bold setting in the Text Editor tab. Let's check it again. Activate the template, check the preview page. Looks pretty good. Now I'll add my third speaker. I'll go back to the template, select the Columns section in the CQ5 Sidekick panel, add the column set, and set the column layout to two columns, 40%, 60%. Add the image, Double click to see the Edit Component dialog box. Select the Advanced tab and set the width to 100. Then select the Image tab and click in the center to make my image selection and click OK. Now I'll add two text components. The first one is for the name. So I'll type that in here. Then I'll set the font properties, background color, and font size. Oops, I forgot to set the bold setting, so I'll double click to get back to the text editor and set the format to bold. That's better. I need a second text component for the speaker overview text, so I'll drag that to just below the name. Double click to access the editor, paste in the overview text, and I'll set the font properties there too. Background color, font color, and font size. There's one more thing I want to do. This No More button needs to go to the bottom of these three speaker sections. I'm going to move it all the way to the bottom to where I have only one column. Now. I'll activate my template and look at the preview page. Beautiful! And that's how you add multiple speakers for your event. Except for one thing. This is the event info page. Remember, there's also a speaker info page. So you'll have to do something similar on that template page. Just go to the template and click the speaker info tab and start adding your columns and components. That wasn't so difficult. Once you get used to the template editor interface, you'll be flying through this process in no time. If you have any questions about Adobe Connect, feel free to contact me using the information on the screen. Until next time, this is your Connect Guru.